Last week I made a quick little video about the end of my hiatus and return to working on the cabin. I said to look forward to a video next Sunday, and ladies and gentlemen, I am here to deliver. We dug out a little parking spot, got the place cleaned up, and now, as we're fully and completely moving into spring around here, it's time to get back to work. Before we get into it today, I just wanted to stop for a second and thank you all so much for all of your wonderful comments on uh, on last week's video. It really, really means a lot to me that after being on such a long hiatus, you guys came out of the woodwork just to give me your love and support, and it was really, really meaningful, and I just want to say thank you. To those who were wondering why the cabin was such a wreck last time, it's because when I stopped working on it last winter, this place was basically a construction zone, and I just left it that way. And then periodically I would come here to grab various odds and ends that I wanted that I just literally just like empty boxes on the floor and grab what I need and leave. If you were wondering if I got robbed or not, that was all me. Anyway, on to the video. To get myself into the groove of working on the cabin again, I decided I'd start with something really simple and finish the windows with some trim. I completely forgot to film anything inside, but we got the wood that we needed and now we just have to head back home and get it all cut up and slap it into the windows. So let's go do that. I really couldn't have asked for a better day to really get back to work. The last two weeks or so, the end of the 10-day forecast has been promising 30s and 40s, but every time we get close, it would get pushed back again. Now that it's finally started, it's not showing any signs of stopping. Right now, the lowest temperature I can see in the forecast is 40 degrees, which feels closer to 70 after five months of winter. The snow still won't be gone anytime soon, but it's certainly melting, and it finally feels like the world is starting to open up again. There's expeditions to gear up for, mountains to be climbed, trips to be planned, just a really exciting time of year all around. I definitely have some more building projects coming up this summer, but before anything like that happens, I need to get this cabin fully and completely finished. All told, there's not much left to do. Four or five more videos should finish it up nicely, but I've said things like that before, so take that with a grain of salt. But that's my hope, and with my newfound confidence in building and the added benefit of it being warm enough to finally live on site again, I can see a near future where we make a lot of progress really fast. But for now, we're still a bit slow by the snow, it's a bit difficult to maneuver around the property. The trade-off for the view of the mountains is that the field that allows it also creates massive drifts and blows a huge amount of snow onto the land, so it's probably two and a half feet deeper than most places with more sheltered landscapes. But some quick digging gives us a nice little workspace to cut up our trim and get to work. At least, that's what I was hoping for, but for whatever reason, the generator decided not to cooperate. Well, this is not the hiccup I was expecting to have. I tested that out the other day, turned right on. Now it just refuses for no reason. So let's go find a handsaw, I guess. I believe this is quite literally the only saw we have. So I guess let's try to make do. Not very efficient at all, or precise, but it might work. Ooh. Really don't know why I spent so much time trying to make this work. On top of it being a literal, unironic antique, that coping saw was very, very dull. But I was still trying desperately to avoid going to the hardware store, and was willing to do whatever absurd, nonsensical thing was required to do so. Probably hate me for this. I'm gonna do it anyway. But that resolve quickly dried up. That is not going to work. So, we have an errand to run. That is what you get for trusting in technology, ladies and gentlemen. Those, we need to revert to the cave mandates. $20 and 35 minutes later, we have what we need. Let's get back to it. I became a bit of a garage rat when I was around 14 or so and spent countless hours toiling away at whatever little project it caught my fancy that week. But oddly enough, I've hardly ever used a handsaw and I was kind of surprised by how much fun I had using it. Enough that I definitely use it again even when a skill saw is an option. But that could definitely change a few months from now when it's 80 degrees and I'm trying not to get too sweaty. Oh. Well, that 
one's not even close. Why is that one not even close? Oh! Are you kidding me? Look at that. This seam, this weak seam in the middle, broke. Are you kidding me? Look at that. I'm half tempted to just put another nail in it, like over here somewhere. Uh, we have extra. Well, I'll just make another one. That turned out just lovely. It really goes a long way in making things feel more finished. Of course, we still have a little bit of gap and little extra open spaces on the side. That one in particular, which I will get to eventually. But precision is the enemy of progress, and we have made progress at the cost of precision. But I think tonight we're going to leave it at that because I am just about out of wood. I'm going to need to buy another piece of that 1x6x8. And we're going to Fairbanks tomorrow to get a bunch of stuff and hang out with Ian for a bit so we can get more work done after we get back from that. Let's head home. Give us another. Give ah! a, what, why would you do that? It's a completely empty road. You suck. I hate you. I just woke up. I was gonna ask you to give me a little funny Ianism. A little fe funny Ianism. I feel like a like a child just gaining like sentience on like the age of four years old. What is what it? Am I? What am I doing? Don't do that on the road. This was the biggest thing I really wanted to get done, as well as the thing I've been most worried about for a long, long time. A kitchen setup is one of the last bits of internal necessities I actually need, but considering everything in Alaska is so far apart, the Home Depot in Fairbanks is the only place to get it. And for some bizarre reason, they put everything that's super heavy on shelves like 12 feet off the ground. And with the vehicle I have now, there's no way I would have had enough space to load it up, let alone actually get it to the cabin. Fortunately, there was a section of unfinished cabinets in the back I'd never seen before. That was not only fairly cheap, but also flat on the ground and relatively light. Propane, propane accessories. I only have propane accessories, sir. I got propane outside. <laughs> Bless you. <coughs> I think I've caught some kind of like brain-eating amoeba or like... It's good to leg. know. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Maybe you'll get to name it. I'll be the first. <laughs> Maybe you'll get to name it. That'll squirrel be fun. Flu. I think oh. it's a thing. I bet squirrel flu is a thing. That's a <laughs> vile name for a disease. <laughs> I feel like if I had the disease and they named it, it'd be squirrel flu. It's awesome, dude. It's like perfect. No more or less room. <laughs> we, we can fit approximately... It would not have worked in my car, so this is great. Something here. We had my truck if we'd waited till Friday. This? I got stuff to do. That's it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> and they said it couldn't be done. There's really no room for anything else. Actually, I need to go back in there and get curtains. And get so I'll curtains? be right back. I 100% know what I'm doing. He doesn't. We have no measuring equipment. I, we said eyeball it. You said eyeball it. We. No, you said it, and I said, okay, I guess. I know, I still said we. Eventually, we could have a faucet. <laughs> That's funny. That's Running really water. funny. What are you talking about?
Maybe Safety you should. Switch on. Maybe you should move the move the. Move the what? This this little fella right here first. That is not at all a problem. I've done a lot of winging it in the past, but, but this might take the cake for blatant recklessness. I mean, neither of us have ever installed the sink before, we didn't watch a video to get any idea, we had zero measuring tools, and the one skill saw we had almost immediately ran out of both batteries. Even worse, the one tool that actually would have been appropriate for this, my jigsaw, is completely gone without a trace. Honestly, that wasn't a surprise though, as for the past year or so I've lived almost exclusively in one room buildings, and I still lose things almost every single day. I mean, I turned the place inside out. I have no idea where it went. Fortunately, the generator decided it was time to start working again, so now the skill saw was back on the table. Cutting out the hole for the sink was a bit of a longer process than I expected it to be, and a good deal more nerve-wracking. When I got the sink, I figured I'd have a ton of room for air, because the hole only really needed to be big enough to fit the basin, but apparently the one I have has these clip bars that are supposed to lock into some part of the cabinet, and they're right up there on the edge, so there was a bit more precision involved than I would have liked. When you're living paycheck to paycheck and spending the vast majority of it on land payments, building supplies, rent, and gas money, endangering the structural integrity of an expensive countertop by getting just inches away from the edges is a very unfun experience. But eventually I managed to get just enough room to cram in the sink. All that was really left to do was slap on some sealant and give it some time to set. Fortunately for this, I only needed the sealant itself as I already picked up a plunger for it when we put in the windows near the end of last summer. And it was just a simple action of swapping them out, popping the seal, and laying lines along the edges of the sink. Did a quick wipe of the sink to get rid of some of the more obvious smears and residue from being thrown around outside, and then I used my generator to weigh it down a bit and give it a really solid seal. My next order of business was going to be putting in the curtains, but I just kept running into problems, and it didn't end up happening. For some reason, the curtain packs I bought only had a single curtain in each, which is baffling, because who's buying single curtains? And the hooks I put up to hold the rods were spaced just barely too far apart to fit. So I think I'll leave that one for the start of the next video. But I can still finish up this last window as far as trim goes, so I think I'll get that done and call it a day. And I think that's gonna just about do it for today's episode. I thought I could get more done than I ended up getting done, but the sink of the cabinet was a huge step in the right direction. We're finally filling things out in here. And um, I'm looking forward to next week. And you know, the snow is just melting more and more every day and it's opening everything up. And it's only getting easier, which is a very well needed change of pace. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Nick and until next time, stay warm out there. Good day.